Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today, I'm going to tell you about five isopod species that are excellent for beginners. If you want more in-depth care information on isopods, I have videos on that too that you can check out after this one. So the first species I want to talk to you about is the zebra pill bug, Armadillidium maculatum. It's easy to see where it got its name looking at this beautiful pattern, although some are more spotted than striped. This species moves somewhat slowly, making it a good candidate for handling among isopods, as long as you can do so gently and responsibly. So very small children, probably not. More active than some of the other isopods, especially when kept in large numbers, it's a good one for a display isopod. Besides the normal zebra pattern or color, they come in several morphs. They've got chocolate, Dalmatian, Paradox, and some even have vivid yellow markings instead of the white ones. They do best when they have a damp hide and a dry area that they can choose from with moderate to high ventilation. Zebra pill bugs are pretty easy to keep and breed and consequently they're both inexpensive and very easy to find if you know where to look. The next species I want to talk to you about is Porcelionides pruinosis. The wild type is a sort of velvety gray color that's known as the powder blue, but there's also a powder orange, a whiteout, and a pied version known as Oreo crumbles, and they're all the same species. This species tends to be quite active even in the daytime, especially if you have them in good numbers, has a very good appetite, and large numbers of this isopod will gather quickly around food to nibble on them when you feed them. This species is on the smaller side, and it's not a great candidate for handling because they're both small, fast, and easily injured. They tend to have very soft bodies. They are, however, an excellent addition to a cleanup crew in a bioactive setup for many different species, as long as it has good ventilation and it can choose between dry and moister areas so it can regulate its own humidity needs. This species does not roll up into a ball to protect itself like some of the others that I'll talk about today, but it can move fast and breeds very prolifically. This species is really easy to find, although some of the color varieties are still more expensive and harder to find than others. This species, Armadillidium vulgare, is of course the familiar roly-poly, also known as the common pill bug. One of the reasons that this is a great beginner isopod is that you may very well be able to go out in your backyard right now and collect a few for free. The wild ones are usually a gray color and some have small yellow markings. But there are a lot of color varieties these days. They come in shades of orange, yellow, white with dark and yellow spots, and various others. The wild type is not an extremely fast breeder, but when it does breed, the mother produces a lot of babies at one time. This species does like some ventilation and does best when it can choose between a damp area and drier areas. Because it's so common, the common pill bug is easily available and very inexpensive, although some of the more exotic color varieties are a little more costly and a little harder to come by. Before we talk about a few more great beginner isopods, I want to give a shout out to my patrons at Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, they help me do more of what I love, which is sharing information about the creatures I keep with you and everyone. I'll put a link to my Patreon at the end of the video if you'd like to know more. And now, back to those isopods. This very common isopod is sometimes known as the common sow bug, and in the hobby it's often known as P. scaber, from its scientific name Porcelio scaber. You may be able to find the common gray variety of this species in your backyard. Unlike the common pill bug, it cannot roll itself into a ball. It's now available in many different color varieties and patterns, such as orange, calico, dalmatian, and orange dalmatian, just to name a few. It's easy to keep and is a moderate breeder. It can tolerate pretty low ventilation, though it does do best with a little bit of ventilation and the ability to choose between damp and dry areas in the enclosure, just like most isopods. Many of the color varieties of this species are very reasonably priced and also easy to source. This species, Porcelio labis, is noticeably larger, stockier, glossier, and smoother than its close cousin, Porcelio scaber. It comes in a number of color varieties, such as the gray wild type, an orange morph, the milk back, which has a pale area in the center of the back, to the dairy cow, which is basically white or off-white with the regular dark markings. There are others as well. This species tends to be quite day active, especially dairy cows and milk backs in my experience. They breed very quickly, so be prepared for that. 
So not only does their size, activity level, and interesting appearance make them a fantastic first isopod, their prolific nature makes them reasonably priced, and they're easy to find for sale. So there's a quick introduction to five excellent beginner isopods. I could easily go on. There are many other pet isopods out there that are great for beginners, and many more that are wonderful once you've had a little bit of experience. Right now I have about 40 different types of isopods, and I have a lot of videos about them, so feel free to check those out. And thanks for watching. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.